I think you can take that. Ryan, are you okay? Fine, try to relax. We're almost there. Now, what kind of musician do you expect to be if you can't hear? You're out of line, so I gave you a whack in the back of the head. Panic disorder and anxiety disorder. It is probably one of the most common illnesses that appear in doctor's office, not my office. I'm talking about the emergency room, the family practice rooms. What is panic attacks and what's anxiety disorders? A panic disorder is a condition where suddenly you get this sense of unreality. Your head begins to spin. You get dizzy. You want to fall down. Your heart begins to beat and you get short of breath. And usually you get these tight muscle spasms that appear out of nowhere, including the abdomen. You have no explanation to this. You go to the emergency room, you think you're dying because it's exactly what it feels like. You're dying. You never had one before. And they tell you after they do a major workup, and they do major workup with thousands of dollars, it turns out you have nothing. So you say, what is that? They give you a small dose of adamant and they send you home. If you're lucky, you'll be referred to the right provider, such as a psychiatrist. If these panic attacks don't get treated early, they proceed to become more permanent. Now these symptoms, they usually begin in three minutes and they escalate to 10 minutes, now become daily, more frequent, without timing and unexpected presentation. These is a presentation of the brain telling you there's danger. But there is no danger. What kind of danger? The danger of a car coming at you, the danger with a gun in your face, the dangers of the soldiers that they always appear. Usually these anxiety episodes are provoked by nothing and sometimes it could be as simple as a change in temperature. It's as if your nervous system has become super activated to give you a warning sign when there's none. And that's why it's called a panic disorder. Before you understand what panic disorder is, you need to understand how the brain operates. People get real defensive if they have to see a psychiatrist because they have to take a pill. What if you have diabetes? And what if you have hypertension? Well, if you have hypertension, you can stroke out and you will die. So you will take that pill. And if you're diabetic, if you don't take the medication, progressive diabetes can cause all kinds of organ disease, but you will take it. But when you tell somebody that the panic disorder can be treated with a simple pill, one or two, they said, no, I'm not crazy. You need to understand that the brain is an organ just like the heart, just like your muscles, just like the abdominal system. The brain is simply a collection of electrical circuits and neurons, which are the wiring, as well as water, as well as chemicals. If you compare the nervous system to the universe, they look the same. It was because of this similarity in geometry, I've taken a lot of interest over the years on astrophysics, quantum physics, as well as astronomy. So panic disorder is a condition that could be easily treated. How do you diagnose it? It's easy. Going to the emergency room, going to many doctor's offices, they find nothing. Eventually, the doctor will wisen up and will give you a medication. The problem is, if you don't go to the right physician, such as psychiatrist, they won't be able to match your disease with the medicine because the treatment of panic disorder is very simple. I often get asked, what medicine do I need to take? I cannot mention the pills because I am not prescribing here online, but it's simply given an anti-anxiety drug and something else we call an SSRI. People don't want to take medications for the brain. They're very personal about it. They rather suffer lose time from work, interfere in relationships. So you have to overcome this denial that you have. The brain is the same as your heart. The brain doesn't kill you right away with panic. It simply destroys your life very, very slowly. You begin to poor performance on the job. You can't wake up, you can't sleep, and your life become miserable. 
and all it takes is a couple of medications and you're fine. So they asked me, how long do you have to take this medication for? Anxiety is like a snowball. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have to kill it. You have to kill that snowball because it becomes even worse. And if you don't treat anxiety over the years, it develops into other conditions because anxiety provokes elevated cortisol levels in your brain as well as your body. And it causes cell death. That's right. Anxiety produces cortisol that causes cell death in the brain. Look it up. We live in a society where we're so stressed out, we're so busy, we have no time for ourselves. Cortisol levels are sky high. Ask anybody who lives under stress. Eventually, it catches up to you. So you actually begin to treat the disease and you only have to treat it for about maybe six months to a year. But that's not the only treatment. There is something called cognitive restructuring, a special kind of therapy that you take along with the medicine. Because you see, you're going to have to train the brain to reduce those cues. So if it feels cold and you begin to have a panic attack, you kind of say to yourself, wait a minute, this is a, just a trigger. You have to identify the triggers that cause your panic. I tell you, do not waste time. Get help quickly. Panic disorder and anxiety disorder are treatable conditions that if untreated will cause a great deal of misery and loss of work and poor quality of life. Treat it before it's too late. You're welcome to come to my office. I'll see you again here at Mind Hijack.